So today we are going to do some geomet geometric sequences. Yay. Um, we have covered a little bit of it before. Um, just a reminder, go on, have a look at the videos of the question seven, question eight, okay? Um, also a reminder that in here, you have got under classes, M5, problem of the week has been posted for this week, just to remind you. And uh, if you go on to files, formula booklets, this is the formula booklet that you need, okay? Mm -hmm. So it is a good idea, especially with these sequence questions, to uh, keep this on hand, okay? So we have page five, okay? So this is the information that you get. So we're, oops. We're going to look at this particular question, okay? So we've already looked at geometric sequences, but we're going to do a couple of questions together to make sure we uh, understand what's going on because there's a little bit extra that we haven't covered yet. You may have seen last year, but we will do it again, okay? So this question, we've got a geometric sequence, this first term 14, third term 56, so that there are two possible values for the common ratio. So, who can remind me what a geometric sequence is? Yeah, it goes up by a common ratio, okay? Each sequence goes up by a common ratio. That means that each sequence is being multiplied by the same amount as the previous term, okay? So, any ideas how we want to set this question up? We'll do this together. First term is 14, third term is 56. What do you think is a good idea to write down first? First term. Right, and what's the best way of writing first term? Q1 away. Say again? Q1 away. Q1? What, what terminology do we use for first term? Mm -hmm. U1, right, okay, so we're going to write U1 <laughs> is equal to 14. Like the new tablet board. Um, right, third term, how do we say that, uh, Lely? Mm -hmm. Right, U3 is 56. Okay, so I have got my first term, which is 14. I have got my second term, which I don't know, and then I've got my third term, which is 56. To get from my first term to the second term, I'm multiplying it by a certain number. To get from my second term to my third term, I am also multiplying it by a certain number. You okay, Jaden? Yeah, I was just reading. Okay. So it's at this point, we can either try and work out what R is, by kind of using the information we've got. The easier way, I think, is to use the formula, okay? The formulas are right here. <clears throat> so if I set up my formula, using my formula, what is U3 equal to? Using my formula, just give me it in terms of the letters and whatever numbers we know. 14. Yep, 14, because that's U1, multiplied by, R. yep, R, which is what we're trying to find out, and that's to the power of, mm -hmm. what's N in this case? Mm -hmm. N in this case, like there's your N is in front of the, it's a subscript, okay? Yeah. So n is 3, so this is 3 minus 1, so that is 2. And this is all equal to 56. Let me get that calculator. Can you guess? You can, but this is quicker, okay? It is, but sometimes it's not as easy. That's a good point. Sometimes it's not as easy, and sometimes it's easier just to kind of use the formula. Because I'll give it straight out. We have it right here now, okay? What do I do on both sides? Um, no, because we're wanting to work out, we're not working out an exponent, okay? 
Um, so what is our next step here? We've got 14 r squared equals 56. We're trying to work out what r is. Right, divide both sides by 14. Good job, Jaden. What is 56 divided by 14? Four. So what is r equal to? And? Negative two. Right, because it says in the question there are two values. Good. Are you guys good over there, Kate and Samara? Alright, part B. Hence find two possible sums for the first seven terms. So I'm looking, if it's the first seven terms, it is S7. Yep, the sum of the first seven terms. And I'm going to use, does it matter which formula I use? No. Nope. So I will put in, I'll do it for the first term. So U1 is 14. We take R as being positive. Subtract 1. All divided by 2 minus 1. And if we want to work out the other value, S7 is equal to 14. And this time it is negative 2 the power of 7. So you need to be careful here when you're putting this into the calculator that you use your brackets in the correct places. Okay, and we got our two possible sums. Is that okay, Lily? The nice thing about these questions is it, uh, if you use the formulas, you can't really go too far wrong, okay? Even if you use the formula and you do go wrong, you'll get marks for using the formula, okay? <clears throat> okay, so Lely has just asked about the second term. If we're using R as being positive 2, second term is 28. Multiplying that by 2 gives us our 56. If we are using negative 2, oops, still getting used to this, I get negative 28, but multiply by negative 2 again, and I still get back to my positive 56, because a negative times a negative is positive. All good? Um, S7, does anybody work these values out? 1,778. Negative. Sorry, Ari? Oh, negative 1,806. Excellent. Easy enough? Ready to skip on? Or any questions? Okay, I'll put up the next question. Um, so this is a real world example. Social networking site gains new members very quickly. Each month, the number of new members is one and a half times the number in the previous month. Okay, so we're given all this information. Explain why the number of new members per month forms a geometric sequence. This is a very much an IB type question you're having to explain stuff, especially at the end. Okay, do you guys want to have a quick couple of minutes to work through it first? Yes. All right, so a good point, just actually going back to this question. This I should actually, well spotted by Lily, be a negative two minus one, because R is negative two in this case, okay? Six hundred and two. Okay. Probably. I'm still learning though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right there. Won't it be negative? Right there. Yeah, there we go. Won't it be negative? No, because it's 
Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> negative two to the power seven, that's a negative number. Oh, yeah, it's Subtract one is still negative. <laughs> Divided by a negative will give me a positive. So those two equations are, are These two? Yeah. Yep, exactly the same. It doesn't matter which one you use. Okay. All right, so we're going to have a look at this question. Explain why the number of new members per month forms a geometric sequence. Yes, uh, Samara. Wow. Okay. Let's hear it. Um, basically, the number of new members is given by the same amount, and it's like you have to get the number of new members is given by the same amount. The number of new members increases by. What did you say? Okay, and it is a, okay, by a multiple, okay, of 1.5 each time. Okay, so we need something along those lines, okay? We want to, you either want to have the word multiply or like scale factor, something like that, okay? Just saying that it increases each time is not really good enough, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Excellent. Okay, part B. Find the number of new members in the second and third months. All right, go on, Samara. You're on a roll. Really quickly. Yes. I will try. And um, also, okay, yes. I just worked it out by, I got a million times in the previous number by 1.5. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, your first one is 15,000. And you're multiplying that, yep, by 1.5, and you got 22,500, good. So the, that is the one for the second month. The third month, you're multiplying that by? Good, and you get? 33750, good. So that is part B done. Easy? Yes. Right, part C. Find the total number of new members that will begin in 2016 if this growth continues. So, <clears throat> the total new members. So this is the number of new members, say, in January. This is the total new members in February. Yep. March, and so on, okay? We want the total number of new members. So what are we having to do to each of these things? We are... Yeah, we are summing them, we are adding them up, okay? So we're finding the sum of the first how many terms? Twelve. Twelve terms, right. Plus dot dot dot. So we want the sum of the first twelve terms. First term is? Fifteen thousand. Multiplied by r, which is 1.5 to the power of? Minus. One. Over. 1.5 minus 1. And that gives us a total of? 3,860,000. That's just using the formula, yep. Which one did you do, Lily? Lily? The nth term? Yeah. Okay. Any questions on that so far? Say again? Yeah, sorry. So three million eight hundred and sixty two thousand three hundred and ninety. All right, then part D. Because they will get bigger than the population of the Right, okay, good. Also, competitors may rise in football members. Also, not everyone wants to go to the football members. And so I think the last one is that you're not going to go to the football members. So we'll, okay, these are good points. If growth continues. So we'll, okay, so these are good points. If growth continues. 
in this way, it will require. What did you say, Jed, in your first thing? Indefinite. Infinite. 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 <laughs> Okay, that's a good point. Um, anything else did anybody put? That's probably the biggie. Okay. And that, so that would be enough for that. How could we justify that answer? What could we do? Okay, that's true, but how can we justify this answer saying that if growth continues this way that it will require you know an infinite human population? The population will get too big for this to actually continue. Right, okay, good. So what the uh, how can we do that? Find a really big number. Can can you be, be more specific? What can I work out? What what sorry? Can you put the actual eight billion into the CPS? I could, but what? Let's put in. Why don't instead of putting eight billion into it and working back, why not put in the the uh, number of months? Okay, so we did this twelve months. We had three million. Why don't we put in say for? 36 months, okay, and see what value we get. So sub 36 months in to see what uh, new members would be. Okay, and exactly. So we'll put that as well. Too many that actually have internet access. Those are good points. Okay, now this justification is important because you know you have to justify all this type of stuff. But it's quite straightforward because we're just doing exactly the same type of thing we did before. I quickly just write it down. So if we look at 36 months. Same formula, one five zero 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 one point five thirty six minus one. This actually gives us a population of six billion. It's going to be twenty two billion. Which is about three. Okay. Which is more than the world's population. Way more. So that's pretty good justification, yeah. <laughs> I need to practice my writing skills. You got a bamboo pad? That people use for drawing, but instead just write on. Yeah, well, see, Mr. Potts has bought a new one of these tablets, so it's supposed to be arriving today, so I might get his. It's just a lot nicer than this one, it's a lot easier to write on. But he's got a new one, and I've still got an old one, so that means he's cooler than me. <laughs> just get a and I wish it, shouldn't I? All right, any questions on that? All good? All right. All right, so this question, your aunt gives you 10 or more Australian dollars on your first birthday, 20 on your second, and so on, increasing by the same amount. Find the total given for your first 13 birthdays. And then on which birthday will you have been given 1,530? Okay, and this is a typical problem, especially part... B, okay, so let's have a go at that, please, first. Yeah, what type of sequence is this, Lily? It's arithmetic, yep, yeah, because? Um, it increases by the same amount every year, so she gets 
10 dollars on the first birthday 20 dollars on the second and so on so it's going to be how much on the third birthday hold up hold up why are you saying 130 so tomorrow because it doesn't increase by 10 it's increasing it's at 10 on the first 20 on the second right, so, so on the third it's going to be it's going up by 10 each time. Okay. So the third one is 30. Fourth one is right. Oh, oh, right, okay. I was asking them on the third birthday. Oh, okay. okay, so keep going off up the formula. But then you have to add all of them together to 13. Uh, right, but you can do the sum of the first 13 terms, okay, using the formula, right? So, Doesn't say it's a geometric sequence in the question. Uh, nope. 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 Well then how do you give it a fifteen? Yeah. Is that a yeah, that would be your fifteenth and almost a third. So you wanna see in total, okay? In total uh, is an important thing. So it's the sum okay. When will you have reached fifteen thirty? Okay, starting from the start. So you're all, you're all okay, so if I just quick, I'll just do the first part and then let you work on the second part of this conscious of time. So you get 10 on the first birthday. Only on the second birthday and so on. So increasing by the same amount every year. Increasing by the same amount every year is the important part. So this is going up with a common difference. Common difference means it is an arithmetic sequence. So this is my first term. Up here. First term, second term, third, fourth. So we can actually see the pattern here straight away. Add with the total amount for your first 13 birthdays. What does that require? It's not just 130. It's the sum. It's the sum, yep, of the first. First 13 birthdays, yeah. So we're using uh, okay. either one of these formulas. I'll just probably use this one. The total amount for the first 13 birthdays is? Anybody work it out? Yeah. Yeah? 910, good. I got that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. What did you do? No, I No, that's right. That's right. Is that okay, Smart?
And is that okay? So it's the, find the total amount given for the first 13 birthdays. So the total amount, so the first birthday plus the second plus the third and so on. What are we working out for the part B? What are we trying to find? You're working out N, right, good. So we want to find when is the sum of the first N birthdays equal to 1530. So again, we use the formula, but we don't know what N is. But we can put everything else in. Seventeen and a half. Mm, I think you made a mistake somewhere. What do we do at this point? So this is just we put everything in. We're trying to find out n. What's our next step? You down to here? What do we do? Multiply both sides by? Two? Two? Okay, that sounds good. So I've got uh, three, zero, six, zero. Let me make that look more like a zero. Is equal to n times n plus n, n. What type of equation is this? It is a quadratic. What could I do to it? What could I divide everything by? And how do I go about solving this? Say again. Subtract three hundred six, so you get good. Uh, Jen, you get zero on one side. Okay, and now what do I do? Okay, we can either factorize or or use quadratic formula. Yeah. Formula. So, what, which one are we going to do? Use quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is okay, but if you notice, oh. two numbers that multiply to give 3 or 6 are 16, 16 17. and 17. Okay. And if I do, one of them has to be negative. So if I make this one negative, okay, and then so that will give me the... Uh, Factors that I need, so it's going to be n. Oh, 16 and 17, all right? No, 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 no. Yeah, it's actually. No, that's actually you're almost right. 17. 17 and 18. Thank you, Lily. And one of them has to be negative. It has to be this one, because 18 take away. 17 is the 1. So I get two values for n. What are the two values for n? 18. So it's negative 18 and 17. I mean, yeah. Negative 18 and 17. 17. No. So, it's 17. so it has to be 17. Why does it have to be 17? Okay, must be positive. Okay. So at his 17th birthday. Okay, we can't have a negative birthday. And 17th birthday.
he gets, or she gets, I don't think it specifies, the 1530 in total, all added up. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Going by a bike. <laughs> 